there my sweet friends and welcome back to my channel and happy Wednesday to everyone. I hope you're having a great week so far. We're going to be working on this flip book folio today and this was inspired by these very sweet retro kitchen stickers that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And so we have lots of flips here, so much space for pictures and journaling. And I also have included some folded tip outs as well. So you can really fill this book up. And so this is very simple to make and all of the pages are the same size. So we only need one set of measurements for the pages and that makes it much quicker and easier to create. So stick with me and we will make this together. So I'm starting the base of this flip folio with 110 pound card stack. You really want this to be extra sturdy and nice and thick. I have three different pieces here. They're all cut at five and a half inches wide. My first piece is going to be 10 and a half inches tall. I'm gonna score it at five and five and a half. So our page size will be five inches and the first spine is going to be a half. The second piece, still five and a half inches wide, but this time it's 10 and three quarters. So I'm going to score it at five and five and three quarters. And for my third and final piece, I have five and a half inches wide by 11. And I scored it at five and at six. So my outside spine will be one inch wide. And I have that so that we can develop enough room on the inside to add all of our layers. So I'm going to use a combination of double-sided adhesive tape as well as my Tombow. And this just helps to keep the pages in place while the glue sets up. And because these are moving parts, it's definitely nice to have that additional adhesive so that it will be very secure. So I'm just lining that up where the spine comes together. And because this opens up twice, I'll just add my next layer here on the right. And this will be the spine for the outside. And remember, we're going to be adding that second adhesive. So putting that on before we join the pieces. And that goes right up to that score line again. It's easy to keep everything lined up because it's all the same height. Now our book will be five inches tall by five and a half inches wide. And this will fold in and this will be our front cover. So the additional base elements that we're going to add are going to be cut from 65 pound weight card stack. That will help to reduce some of the bulk on the inside. And I have this cut to be five inches wide by 11 and I scored it at five and a half. So we're gonna have our five by five and a half inch book. I'm going to add this with the same combination of adhesive. When I open my book, I want the top portion to fold one way, the center portion to fold the other way, and then the last portion so that it kind of comes out on both sides. So I'll just go ahead and add the first layer here on the top and I can just line that right up. And you would make three portions like this that would fold in half. You would add your next one here to fold open and the next one here to fold open that way. I have already prepared my base, so we'll go ahead and work on that one. So for the inside and the cover, I'm going to be pulling this Kiss the Cook collection from my stash. This is from Bo Bunny. I've had this for a bit um, and I think it matches the stickers very well. I am just about at the end of crashing my stash and so I'm going to start looking for some new collections to order. So if y'all have any suggestions, you can drop them in the comments below. I really haven't been on to look at what is available. So if there's anything that interests you guys, you can let me know and I'll have a look at that. Um, but this is just a sweet kind of retro inspired kitcheny theme, although it is not 
like super kitcheny, it would definitely work for other projects as well. So because all of our pages are going to be the same size, you only need one set of measurements to cover this entire book. So we're going to start with a cardstock border, and this is just a really pretty coordinated aqua sort of teal color. So the measurements are four and seven eighths by five and three eighths, and the pattern paper is four and three quarter by five and a quarter, and that's just going to give us a nice generous border all the way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and center that on the outside. And then we're going to go ahead and finish the inside of these flaps as well. And this is just some more paper from that collection. I really think this star pattern is a very sweet. And I'm going to match all of the inside as well as all of the outside with each other. So all the parts that show together will be well coordinated. So I'm just going to add that here. And then I have a layering pattern for the top. I wanted to show you two different options. One is for if you would like to use your die cutting machine and have a nice fancy edge. I'm going to do that for mine, but I also wanted to share this option with just my pattern paper and the cardstock border, you see how that looks okay. But if you add a, another border with white cardstock, that definitely helps to keep those paper layers from looking too busy. So even if you don't put a scallop border on or die cut, I would recommend going ahead and adding that second border of the white cardstock just to make it pop a little bit better. So I'll just go ahead and add my die cut here and I'm going right for the center. I picked a nice rectangle with a scalloped edge and this came from Gina Marie Designs and that has a nice nesting set so there are several different size options. My layering pattern right into the center of that. I think that looks very sweet because I alternated the scale of the pattern so it definitely looks like a separate layer. Okay, I've already prepared my other fold-out portions, and I just want to share with you that I'm going to alternate these. Remember, I said one is going to go one way, and then the other two are going to go alternated so that it has a little bit more interest in detail. And let's see... This one, this one. Now this one needs to go this way. I'm just going to line it right up with the bottom. Okay, so now you can see we have a nice long strip of those folded inserts. I'm going to finish the front flap as well with that same coordinating pattern just because I think it looks nice that you can see them all together. And then I'll go ahead and add the secondary pattern that I picked for these pages. I have this very sweet strawberry that has a kind of aqua colored leaf, so it is definitely very retro inspired. I didn't have to flip that around just so that I could get it a little bit closer so that I could position that exactly right where I wanted it. So now what I have is the back and the secondary portion that shows when you flip the first section open. And I'm using that same strawberry pattern for that. And here's the back. Once you have all of these base layers in place, you may think to yourself, well, we've left too much room in here and it isn't really very full, but you want to fight the temptation to make these spines smaller because I want to bring in my layered stickers. So these were of the ones that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Um, and I have already kind of cut them apart so that I could sample them around and see where I wanted to position them. But they do have that foam tab on the inside. So you've got to leave room for that extra dimension. So what I wanna do is open my 
book up. There's a lot to go over, so I'll have to slide it back and forth as I'm working along. Um, but I think you can imagine how it will look if it all fit in the camera at the same time. I have picked out my favorite stickers for each page and I'm going to be very thoughtful where I put these because I don't want them to get stuck on each other. So if I have one on this side, I'm going to put my other one over here. That way they will all have enough space to open correctly. This one needs a little bit of extra room because this apron has a generous size apron string on that, but you can see how sweet that is. Now these have a white border around them. It's already how they're made. So that makes them look even more like ephemera. So that makes me really happy. The next one I want to put in is this little scale. And because I have quite a few stickers in the set, I'm probably going to join some of these smaller ones together so that I have a little bit of a bigger impact on the page. And so let's go ahead and pick another one from the set. Now, because they have that layering on the inside, I can position them so that their layers interlock a little bit there and so I can get a nice layered look. So I'll just go ahead and position that here on the corner. And then I'll also add the sweet little pie and I'm kind of squishing them together so that I got a very nice layered look. And so I want to go on this side again because remember that we're swapping out sides. So I've got the flower and I've got, let's see, what else do I want to put? The little hot pad, I think, on this side. So let's go ahead and add those just as we did the bottom one so that we can get a good layered look. I'm just nesting them together before I give them enough pressure to be stuck down very well. Okay, so now you can see the inside is covered and we have all of our flip pages in place. What I want to do is go ahead and add a couple more of these stickers and I can include the same layering detail I did with that sweet die cut and the polka dot on top. Now you see I have my stickers on this side, so I want to have them over here. I've got, let's see, a teacup and a bowl set. So let's add those to this corner. Keep in mind as well, if you're going to finish this with pictures um, or other bits of paper layering, like if you put a recipe in, you can tuck that into this layered sticker as well. So that would be a very nice layered effect. Okay, let's close that one up. And for this one, we have the same layering bit. And I've got an oven mitt to go on the bottom. This set had some additional stickers and I just didn't really love them. And I think it's important to remember when you have a set of stickers, just because it's there does not mean you have to use it. If you don't love it, you don't have to include it just to use up the set. Um, it just makes it so that you've included something that you don't really love and you definitely don't want to do that. Now look how full that is and it really supports each layer because of the depth of the stickers and how they're alternated. So you definitely want to make sure that you've left enough room in the spine for that. So this is the time when you want to bring in some trim. I definitely recommend adding a closure to this because you definitely want to keep everything in here very secure. So I'm just picking this trim and I got that from Really Reasonable Ribbon and I've got a very generous length here so that I can tie a nice size bow 
I'll just clip that off and adhere it temporarily with a little bit of hot glue. What will hold it in place are the paper layers, but this will just keep it secured as we're working along. So we've just got a little bead of hot glue there and I'll press that ribbon into that. So now that's in place, I'm just gonna open this up a little bit. I think it will be easier to work with this if it is a little bit flatter on my work surface. Okay, so remember we're gonna continue to use that strawberry pattern on all of the outside layers, and I'm just continuing to add that cardstock border of the coordinating teal. So I did want to include that layering pattern for the cover as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this straight across the bottom and I'm utilizing the cardstock border that was there from the first layer. So now I want to neutralize a little bit of this pattern. So I'm just going to drop in a doily. Now the reason I kept the front flap a full size is that I did want enough space to include all of the trims and embellishments that I really like and it also has additional room on the inside when you go to finish it off. This is the only pattern that did not come with the collection but I just really wanted something very neutral and this is got the same border and I have put it up on spacers so this is just a circular nested die and I'm going to include my last sticker from that set. I absolutely love this old vintage mixer. I really wish I had one like this but um, I have a white one and it definitely is not fun and vintage like this. These still have the same spacers in between so you're definitely building a lot of dimension here and because we have our ribbon closure close to the bottom I just went ahead and built my flower arrangement without putting the ribbon on as I usually do but I did the same technique with my white flower as I often do. I pulled off the first layer. So now we have two instead of three and I swapped out that center stamen. So originally it was yellow and I liked it, but I didn't think it coordinated very well. So I put gold in and these came from really reasonable ribbons. So you can get both at the same place. And I really like how they coordinate with the center of these flowers. The these are ready-made flowers from Little Birdie Crafts and I think that teal aqua color really coordinates very well. And so I've also got die cut foliage here on the side, some netting and loopy twine bows. And this will just hug that corner and fill that in. So I'll add that with hot glue. And to balance that off, I'm going to add a couple of these little mixer charms and I'll add those as I do with my hot glue and string and then I'll cover them with a vintage button. And our folio is all done. Let's put all of these pretty folds back in so you can see how the book looks when it's all folded up and tied. You may need to come in and clip your trim at an angle so that it doesn't fray. But remember to leave a generous amount here so that you can tie a nice size bow. So here is our recipe folio that we created with our stash paper and our stickers from the Dollar Tree. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Remember to let me know what new collection you're looking at for maybe videos in the future. If you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.